would you like to introduce? I think this is our fifth twin podcast now, which means it that... Is. I think this is podcast 10. I think this is podcast 10 on the channel. That, that's cool. That's cool. 10th podcast, podcast 10. fifth with me in it. 29th so deserve, of April, we're going um, up today. It's yep, 28th right, today, yep. 29th going up, yes. So I deserve half the profits. Well, half a zero is zero. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my, Do the, that, man. don't even get started with YouTube. YouTube ad revenue is in the toilet at the moment. Mm. It's a scary time for YouTubers out there uh, who are making a living. I'll be fine. Just put that out there. My job is okay. For now. Thanks to sponsorships. Because, yeah, ad revenue is, is not good. No. Not, not good at all. Um, but speaking of lockdown, <laughs> been a while. Been a little while. I'm curious, first of all, what is the first thing you would, like, what comes to mind, the first thing you're going to do when you come out of lockdown? I think it depends on how gradual lockdown's being released. Let's just say tomorrow they were like, freedom, or like, it was a dream and none of this happened, but you remembered it, what would you do? I mean, is it bad that I'd probably want to go to Waterstones? I mean, <laughs> I mean it's not bad, it means you like books. <laughs> I'd want to go to Waterstones and I'd want to go to the beach. The beach. Yeah. And I, do you know what? I hate parties, but you know what? I think I would hold a beach barbecue. Oh, a beach barbecue. I think a beach barbecue. I really want to go, like, I partying. I think bringing, like, a soft cricket set, a frisbee, maybe some, like, little rackets or, like, tennis yeah. or something, and just have, like, a beach Those party. Those things that you hold in your palm that have got Velcro on, you yeah. throw the ball at it. I think you some yeah. kind of beach party. That would be cool. I've never really been Cause we to do a them, beach party. Um, at Anglo, we, we hold them. Yeah, for the kids. So I've I've hosted many a beach party, which has obviously when you've got like two hundred kids, you've got to do a lot of activities. There's like sandcastles over there, paddling over there, volleyball, cricket, yeah. rugby. Um, rugby is great on the beach because you tackle someone, you don't get hurt. You know, it's... yeah. <laughs> I can't think of anything more enjoyable. Slight exaggeration, but roll with me. Than a beach party when you're like confident to just be in swimwear. Yeah, so I've well, never yeah. been that really before i not at a party anyway maybe at the pool maybe I, I was at disney like just you know i was just walking around like have it all out you know yeah see i've never ever even when i was like in good shape in sick form and that i just couldn't shake the mentality of not Do feeling not. comfortable fun fun story okay. from um <laughs> so start of second year so this was september last year no year before wow. yeah 2018 so yeah september 2018 um big month freshers ball or okay. whatever yeah. And we're outside, and obviously it's you know it's fresh as everyone's there, dressed very nice. September is usually September. hot. September, yeah, it wasn't. Oh, because it starts at like eight p.m. and okay. goes on to like two or three in the morning. Sounds fun. So <laughs> it gets quite cold. And on the way back, one of my housemates was so cold. This is Priya, not um Susie. Uh, was yeah. So cold that like I was only wearing like a shirt and a waistcoat. Took it off anyway. Yeah, and I, and I like, gave his waistcoat. Like, it's waistcoat. It's waistcoat. So I just gave him my shirt. And just walked home like topless, and it, it was cold. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, but I'm a yeah. hot person, so it's fine. But I sort of realised like, am I gonna get down for public indecency? I thought no, but I thought, but also it's like two in the morning. They're gonna think that I'm like, well, really I was drunk. I was gonna go running. But I just I just walked back like topless, like eh. Yeah, I was gonna whatever. go for a run. It was a really hot day recently. I was gonna go for a run topless, and then I was like, wait, can I do that? I plenty of people I've and, seen do it. Yeah, I've seen people do it, and I, I, I seriously, I sat there, I googled it. This was last week. I was like can you run topless? Because I just didn't know. And in the end, I wore a top because I just, I didn't, part of me was like, maybe some people don't want to see that. I'm sure some people would want to see that. But also, I didn't quite feel comfortable enough either. I mean, I played cricket topless the other day, but that was just in the garden. Yeah. And yeah, you convinced me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but like that's that's boys. with you there. So it's, it's different, but it's, and also because the, the another reason to go topless is when I go running in the morning, I'm literally just putting on a shirt to make it sweaty and take it off and put it in the wash. Yeah. Whereas if I don't wear that shirt, I can then wear it for the day. Yeah. So that was my Same thought. Washing. But yeah, I just, I, I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, um, so you would go to a party, um, beach party, but it would have to be a party with people that I like. After people that you've I been chose. to Waterstones. Yeah. I'd have to go to Waterstones, go to a place like Poundland to like stock up on supplies and like buy like little barbecues. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, get some J2O and some meat, you know. Yep. And I, I think I would, yeah. And I would just stay on the beach, probably. Yeah, maybe I'd sleep on the beach. We would just stay there all night, you know. Who have done that? I've, I've, be, I've been out. Of... The beach specifically, no. But like in terms of like going out and doing things, yeah. Well, you've just stayed out overnight. 
well, yeah, at I've a come, place. Well, I've come back and slept at like maybe seven in the morning or whatever. But like, right. What did you do then? I don't remember specifically. I've done things like, <laughs> like I remember the the time that we went out and it was like just past midnight. And we were chilling in a graveyard for a bit. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I haven't really been out. I really want to go clubbing. Just, I I hate clubbing. I, I absolutely hate so it. So you've done it enough to hate it though. I've yeah. done it like five times. I'm twenty two. I say that. I've only <laughs> I, I've the, I say I hate it. I hate it when I'm sober. When I'm right. drunk, the rare occasion I've been drunk, actually, I've really quite enjoyed it. Until like, but when I get drunk, I get like really happy and really hyper and really athletic. I was like yeah. zooming up those those hills and stairs, like yes, nothing can stop me. It wasn't even out of breath. Sober me like wants to die doing that. <laughs> And I'm there like dancing and I feel great. But then as soon as the like depression drunk hits, I'm like, I hate you all. I want to go home. I'm going to cry. This is pointless. I want to go home. Yeah. But drunk, drunk Tom has, has had some wild SU times. Yeah. Well, see, I, I've only ever been drunk once and that was March, 2018. I, I, it was. You're not including New Year then? No, that's tipsy. Like I wasn't oh, okay, drunk okay, in tips, any okay, sense I would say, of the okay, word. I've not been drunk, drunk. And I don't even think I was then. tipsy. I think I was just happy. Which I guess is mix. Uh, it, it was like I could com- I could have played a cricket match in that moment, for instance. Like my vision wasn't impaired, my yeah. senses weren't impaired, my memory was fine. I well, I literally just had a sip to drink and I was just happy. I think that was just the occasion. But um, so it was yeah, it was March 2018. I didn't even drink that much, but it was vodka mixed with apple juice, and basically I it was like a half an hour period where I had the the amount then i stopped drinking i was fine then half an hour later i didn't feel well and then we got to the club and then very swiftly i I, I threw up in a bag and had to go home and i woke up really like feeling just feeling awful and i said the same thing that everyone always says i'm never drinking again i said i'm never drinking again but i actually meant it i don't get the amount of people that say oh i'm never drinking again (laughs) and then next week they're out drinking to excess like they did i said it because i actually hated it and i actually meant it and therefore i haven't been drunk since so yeah, I, I haven't. So that is whenever I go time. clubbing, I'm sober, but I'm just enjoying it because I'm just dancing and just loving it. Yeah. And I, I also, when you're sober, you're so alert and you can watch all the little intricacies of everyone's interactions. You're yeah. like, oh, he's trying it. And um... <laughs> my problem is that when I see that, a lot of the times I see it and I want to, sometimes I see people and I'm not going to punch him in the face. Like, yeah. I, I see things that make me really uncomfortable. Well, yeah. Actually, like, and I think there is that, that tends to put me off a bit. And I'm, I'm not much of a dancer, like freestyle. I am. And I, I'm not really great. Yeah, I don't really enjoy it that much. Yeah, I do. See, Unless, I do. If I'm but with, when I'm a bit yeah. tipsy, I'm there like. Yes. If I'm with friends, oh. like just dancing, I get, I get my moves out. You know. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. I get really slinky when I'm tipsy and really gay. I get really <laughs> camp. Like I don't think I'm that camp, but I get really camp. <laughs> for, for, like I get really camp. Shocker. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so, I, I yeah wouldn't put that past you. Say that. What dancing or camp? Both, I guess. Um, camp dancing, dancing. And I'm camp. always just there, like they're cute, but they're probably straight. They're cute, but they're definitely straight. Probably they're gay. gay, and I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, I can imagine you probably get that sometimes. Yeah, like like I flirt with someone, and I was chatting to them. And it was, I thought it was going really well. And I said, oh, you know, you, you, we were chatting. And I said, I said they looked attractive. And they looked really confused. And I was like, what? And they sort of just looked, like, confused. And I was like, right, you're so straight. You didn't realise I was flirting with you. Okay. Mm. And yet I had someone else who was getting... Do you know what? Actually, when I've been drunk at the SU, the only guys that really flirt with me are all really drunk straight people. Yeah. Like, straight guys that I'm friends with. They get drunk and then th- and then and then start flirting with me. And it's really quite weird. I one think, of them yeah. actually made out with me. Straight, <laughs> straight guy. Straight guy. I had a crush on for like two years. Except then when he made out with me, it was like a uh, vacuum cleaner with teeth. It was horrible. It was really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like his teeth were grinding on mine. And he was no! like sucking my tongue out. And it was horrible. No! It was horrible. And you I've, sucked I've never... your tongue. Yeah. Like, 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 like I thought it was going to be this cute little kiss. <laughs> but, ah! Like I wouldn't think it was going to be this cute little kiss. He went straight in like mouth open. Like, ah, and like leached onto me. And like started sucking out. It was horrible. And I, and you know what? I was just like, maybe... Is, is he a terrible kisser or is it just that he's drunk or is it a bit of both but either, it way, me? <laughs> either way do you know what I, do you think I, you're a good kisser i know i'm a good kisser because i've had plenty of people tell me so i would say the same i've okay. I, I nailed it i because i'm a very giving person so i I, I try to think oh what does this person like and, and kind of go with that so i yeah i think i'm a good kisser okay yeah i am um, when i kissed the last girl i ever kissed on stage my, my my Scottish love Lucy, who I was played love interest with in first year and second year, mm. um, so gave, said that she'd give me a solid eight out of ten, and I was like, yeah, "That's I think that's quite cruel." But bad, it was because the 
we had to kiss and the fir- our first kiss in rehearsal was really awkward yeah because she thought we were going for it and we weren't so then we didn't and then the next time i thought we were going for it and she thought we weren't so i just kissed her and we weren't like actually doing it and it was really awkward but when yeah. we finally got round it on the final night someone like dared us to see how long we could last and so we made out for like a full-on 10 solid seconds just on stage to the so like everyone was so uncomfortable i bet the audience were just like <laughs> and everyone was like what is this oh my it got goodness. to a point where like it was really uncomfortable people started laughing and they stopped laughing and they just kept going they thought laughed again wow and it was really uncomfortable and, um, <laughs> and yes yeah, so we were both like yeah oh like, if i was it. in the audience and saw honestly that. it was so weird like <laughs> like lottie saw it and was like it's it's so weird seeing it tom being straight because i know you're not straight but you're like being straight it's very weird so i just thought of that vine um me me in the audience if i had to see you kissing like a girl or or a guy or anyone just because it's you and it would be weird for me (laughs) you know that vine where uh it's in america somewhere and there's this gay guy and he he says, hey, professor, look at this, or something along those lines. Kisses this other guy. Yes, I think I'm going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> step back. I think I'm going to vomit. <laughs> I just imagine that would be me in the audience when it, you're, you just go past five seconds. I'm like, oh, no. It's still going. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, it's so... It is weird to, like, I mean, think. you've done stage kissing, but, like, yeah. I suppose your stage kiss was, like, brief. Yeah, well, see, it was, it was, it was a weird one because when I did my stage kiss... It was sort of two different angles. I was fine with obviously kissing yeah. a, a girl, whoever it may be. Um, but then in that situation, I was in a relationship and I didn't want to like <laughs> cause yeah. any turbulence, even though it's nothing but whatever. But also it was... Yeah, it was Lottie. It yeah. was her first kiss. And it was my, my best friend. So, so that's really awkward. So, I mean, there it's like... A, I know some people don't care about first kiss or whatever, but yeah. some people might want it to mean something. And so we stage well, kisses we, don't count. No, exactly. And we had three shows, and the first and second, the first two nights, it was a kiss on the cheek, and then the third night, I think someone was talking about it backstage. I think it was. Miss- I think it was the, yeah, one of the teachers. She said it doesn't seem real. It's not right. And, and I said, I said, um, I think I asked Lottie. Said like, are you okay with that? Would you mind? And she was like, no, I wouldn't mind. So then we just did it. But then she lingered. Right, yeah, she, okay. she, she, I assume she'll watch this because she's watched yeah, other ones. Yeah, she, she does watch them. It was a linger. It was a slight linger because I didn't want to. I didn't want to outstay my welcome, so to speak. <laughs> so you Obviously, just stood there <laughs> as a straight male. I would probably enjoy it. You know what I mean? But I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to overstep the line. So I went to pull away, and then it was just like a bit of resistance. <laughs> I was like, okay, and it was a split second, split second. But um, <laughs> yeah. So there's. There's that. When is the first time you remember kissing someone out of your family? Oh, easy. I was eight years old. Okay. Our birthday party outside in the rain on the trampoline. Oh, Chloe yeah. Burgess. Yeah, the rain kiss. Easy. The first guy I've had a crush on um, when we were in preschool. And so it was a four year. I what? liked her in preschool when we were four. And I oh, you said the guy I had a crush on. You said first no. guy I had it. No. Okay, I was going to say, like, four year guy crush? No, <laughs> four first, years old? The first, the, the first guy that ever caught my notice is actually gay now, by the way. Does um, his name begin with an L? No. Curious. Okay. Who's that? I just thought it was Luke. Luke Carmen? No. Amy. Luke Amy. No, yeah. I didn't. Oh, I hated yeah. him. Yeah, I thought despised it was like a love hate thing. I like, despised him human, because his middle like name. The way he looked. I, it, it had nothing to do with him. It was just that his middle name was Aston for one thing. So mm-hmm. I hated the fact that he was Aston Amy. All right. And I hated the fact that he was in my class <laughs> so every superficial. year. No, no, he was in my class every year, and so I was always second on the register. And I hated it. Yeah. I just hated being second because I was like, I'm always second to you because I'm younger, and I was always second to him. Well, so and as well really in the alphabet, me. your name begins with a T, mine begins with an M. So. Yes, yeah, it just really annoyed me. I was just every time they'd be like, Luke, and he'd be like yes miss and i'd be like and they'd be told i'd be like oh i'm here now am i uh, yeah yeah it's, it's just really annoying me but i suppose then i can never like miss my name because i did sometimes find in sixth form because i was the first name on the register they'd say my name and i wasn't listening that was and i didn't twig oh. that the register had started that was the worst so i'd be it, like what yeah oh i'm here if i like walked into class that, that if you walk into class midway through the register we're screwed yeah because if your name begins with like if your last name begins with like an s they just mark you as well, i was gonna say like alex like stewart he would walk into form and like, say he and I would walk in together in the middle of the register. I'm late, and he just sits down and is not late. <laughs> so maybe that just makes us punctual. So yeah, yeah. If you ever come across Zach Zebra, then uh, he's probably going to be late to everything because he's because he's, he's not used he's, to being picked up he's on. He's used it. to that that luxury. But but Alan A. Allen. <laughs> so your first kiss was Chloe Burgess. Yeah, Chloe Burgess, eight years old. Tell you what, yours was Saffron Wake on the bus. It was, yeah, in year three. 
But that the was reason sooner. the reason that was year four. The reason I was gonna mention it is just because of your then further encounter with the same person two years later. And it's yeah. so funny. <laughs> <laughs> what? So to my knowledge, the way I remember it, if I phrase it in as most hilarious way possible, but perhaps slightly inaccurate to the actual situation, <laughs> you kissed her and threw up. <laughs> no. I swear you threw up. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. Okay, no, no, two separate events two separate vomits no 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 no. No. so the kissing was because we had like basically i was like i don't want to be your boyfriend and we were like 10 so that makes sense yeah it was year five and she was all like yeah and she was all like or fourth grade you should you should you know like what's wrong with me and i was like nothing wrong with you i just don't like you (laughs) and her older sister who was in year seven at the time was like no that's not right you can't do that and she right so in a mobile classroom her older sister locked the two of us in a cupboard in a mobile classroom kiss and said basically was like you've got to kiss and make up and i was like you don't mean it literally. So I gave her a hug and tried to leave, and she was like, "No." So I kissed her so we could get out of this cupboard. Yeah, okay. Um, no, and that was and that was I didn't throw up then. No, I threw up later no, yeah, when at, I went at her to, house. Yeah, at her house. Yeah, I thought it was because you kissed her. No, no, oh, I think I was just ill. That's a boring story. I thought you were at her house, kissed her, hated it so much you <laughs> threw up everywhere and had to come home. No, no, I don't. I don't really remember the details. Oh. Hey, this was this was twelve years ago, Matt. Yeah, it's... and I remembered that version, and I think my version was better. So. Yeah, because mm. that's funny. Because also, when you think of that situation, even though, let's say you kissed and you just happened to be ill and then you were sick and you went home, mm. when you when you mention the situation in your head, you imagine you touching lips and then you just like, <laughs> all over. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. Uh, but w- weird that a lot of the the girls that I sort of either like were kissed like her or sort of was in a kid relationship with, they all have children now. All of well, them. Her... Uh, my year six to seven girlfriend that I never broke up with because we never broke up. We just went our separate ways and went to secondary school and never officially broke up. My then girlfriend in year eight after that, they all have children. I mean, technically, I'm still on a break with Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's got to be a whole thing because I don't know what she identifies as or like what sexuality Carter. she is. Carter. Yeah, Deborah's name now is Carter, but Deborah was Deborah at the time. So is Deb is Carter a he now? I don't know. <laughs> That's just that that little ten second conversation is just like this century, <laughs> just in a bubble. I, it's very. It's not strange. It's not strange to feel the way you feel. And I know we're a close community here. So you watching this, you know I don't mean anything malicious when I say something like that. But it is a bit like it's adjustment. It's hard when you to, when you've known someone for years under the same name. It is adjustment. Yeah, it is. Like you are Gub. So if you were called, I don't know, female version of that, what is it? Gabarella. Gabarella. <laughs> I was going to say Gabalina, so pretty close. But, you know, that would be weird. That would be a weird adjustment. We just call me Gub still. Gubster. <laughs> not Gubster. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, no, I, that, there's... The world is moving very fast. Like, it's kind of... Well, apart from now. It's apart almost from lockdown. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost ah. like the world... It, this really is, like, a break. Well, you know, like, when things go wrong, you just turn it on and off again? I feel like the coronavirus was, like society let's just turn it on and off again because it's clearly not working <laughs> it's gonna be so is it like i don't know because it's easy to say it's gonna be different mm. but then it's easy to say it's gonna be exactly the same but then you think how's it gonna be exactly well, think the same? how 9 11 changed everything see it did like but... airport security has never been the same yeah that's true but i just I don't know. Like, I think back to my regular everyday life a month and a half ago, like going to the gym. That's an alien idea now, going into the gym. I miss it so much. And it's just so weird how we're actually in the same situation every day of every week, just over and over and over again. It's like Groundhog Day. It is. It kind of is like that. And it's so difficult to, like, be motivated and just because like ah oh, just do it tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be exactly the same except the weather might be slightly different yeah it's like this like, like the podcast today well, i think maybe yesterday you first mentioned about recording and i was just like nah i just can't and then even today maybe we weren't going to but yeah as you know i didn't go for a run this morning because i've been for a run every day for the last two weeks 10 kilometers each time and this morning i woke up and thought i wasn't very productive yesterday i'm gonna not run and try and be productive work-wise and it's actually worked but now, after today, with all the work, I'm going to run tomorrow, I think. And Good. just, like, breathe. But, yeah, I'm starting to get a bit warm. Probably wearing trousers. Wasn't the best idea. Knowing that, uh, yeah, the light, the podcast is happening. But, yeah, I mean, I feel good about how the conversation went so far. Yeah. How it's gone. Yeah. 
And also, if you guys are wondering, the hat situation, it was it just started. You couldn't find your normal hat, so you just yeah. picked up another hat. And now you're saying, I, I feel like part of it was to justify your ridiculous choice of hat last week. <laughs> you're now saying, I'm going to wear a different one every every week. It's true, it's true. Next week's hat is a doozy. <laughs> oh, is it the one? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which. No. No? No. On hold. On hold. I have filmed a YouTube video. Hey, you said it. Okay, um, there we go. But I have not uploaded it yet because I wanted to film another one. I have planned the other one. I just haven't filmed it yet because I'm filming this instead. And this obviously is my priority um, because I will pretty much be finished with uni. I mean, I'm basically finished now. But until yeah. the deadline passes, I'm not counting it. And um, although I have applied for a job today. So if I get that, probably won't because I'll be a bit too busy. But you never know. You should start a TikTok account. Absolutely not. Because no, if you start that job, you could get like all those those viral views of all the people saying, oh, you're doing such a good job. You're a key worker. Trust me, the amount of viral videos I've seen of people doing something that takes zero talent and just because they're in an NHS uniform, you're saying it goes I have viral. zero talent? No, but I mean, if you were like a traffic warden, you just stood there. <laughs> traffic doing marshal. A traffic marshal. The job I've applied if you for. just stood there doing like a TikTok trend that takes no talent at all, because you're outside doing a job that's keeping the country going, you're going to get all the likes. And Which all I the... deserve. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, if I, I'm helping the nation. Yeah. I, if no, I get I, I the agree. job. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But the thing is like you you say you're basically finished with uni and then mm. you'll have, you know, either a job or whatever to do. The, the one thing about youtube that is so negative <laughs> boring you apparently um I'm, I'm very tired but when you yawn it's because your body wants more oxygen because you want to be awake yeah so it's yeah, actually yeah. your body being tired but your mind being alert yeah for, well because that's the thing like when i'm when i'm like to the point where i'm before i'm bed i'm like i've got to go to sleep i'm not yawning my eyes are closing i'm not like Ugh. no because that, that's you wanting to stay awake <sighs> <sighs> yeah that was a lovely visual for you there but yeah so when i just before i go to bed it, when i know i need to sleep it's because i'm going like this that's when it's like proper tired. So yeah, I'm, I know you've just said that it's a fact, but yeah. my anecdotal experience to back that up. But as I say, the thing with YouTube, you don't get a break. There's no. Well, I you don't, could I'm, choose a break. You could choose a break, but you're going to suffer for it if you don't work tw- well, double yeah, it's time. Like the self-employed. Yeah. So the one issue is that I don't really have something to work to yet. Like I can't. There's no point working double time in a week to have a week off the next week because there's nothing to do. Well, yeah, because of lockdown. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait that's, lockdown's over that's and my, go on holiday. That's my point. So because there's nothing to do, it means I'm working six and a half, usually seven days a week because there's no point taking a day off. That's but that means as a result, because I'm working seven days a week, I'm feeling the effects of it negatively still. Mm. So it's just yesterday wasn't productive at all. Today has been. I'm not going to say it's purely because I haven't gone on a run, but I think mentally because I was like, I'm not going well, on a run. You've sacrificed that run. Yeah, That's exactly. Like I have to make it count. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so there is that. And I feel in a better headspace. And the fact that we've done this today means that tomorrow will be a better day for me work-wise as well. Because it's not like this is tough, literally, but physically. It is time consuming. Time consuming. i got to edit. Render hours are a huge thing because this takes like an hour to render at least. It kind of sort of sets me back probably if we think of the recording time editing rendering about what, taking stuff hours? out of you it sets like two or three hours of worth of other stuff back so there is that but i enjoy it although it's good yeah it is it is good it's good and we do do still read all the comments and everything like that and we do still you know love reading the comments it's weird that it feels like a very long time since we last made one it's literally been a week i know it's been <laughs> a week but i just don't know and it's getting... At the same time, isn't it crazy to think we've been doing this for over a month now? Yeah. Relatively... That's quite weird. Without effort. Not without effort. I mean, you just sit here and talk for however like, long, that and then effort. that's all you do. Because I do everything else. Um, but, I mean, that makes sense. But, I mean, going back, to, going back to your YouTube video channel, I watched it. I quite liked it. Um, I have this thing where, it, it, to be fair, like... There, there have You'll been watch some, anything. That, well, there have been some people that we went to school with um, that may have made videos in the past, even if they're awful videos. And some people I know have made some awful videos, myself included. I will watch every minute of it just because I like I know them. And it's like, it's even if I don't know them, if I just know of them and I know a, the tiniest bit about them. You want to just watch it? I'll, yeah. I'll just be like, wow, they're doing this. And it That's could be cool. like, yeah. So your videos 
if they're i mean if they're half an hour and you're talking specifically about like books and stuff probably not going to watch them but you just if you were to say no no but this i don't none of my friends or anyone i've known ever does book reviews (laughs) but like if they do a vlog of their completely uninteresting day i will enjoy it because i know them so if you were to like do a vlog guaranteed to watch the whole thing you know so like and even even people watching this this podcast if i've seen you in the comments of every podcast for instance i feel like i kind of know you like, you know what i mean yeah. i recognize them so if any of you posted a video certainly at least the one i would watch like no matter what it is i don't know because if i just feel it. like i know them a bit it's just more interesting it is yeah yeah so that's 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 that but it's weird to think that people do you think people look forward to this watching us I think, people, I think we, people that know us... Yeah, I was going to say people we know. Do. You caught your yawn there. You were like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, I've yawned like yeah. five times currently. It's really bad. Yeah, I think people that know us do look forward to it. But do you think there are like strangers that look Probably. forward I mean, to it? Look at me. Like they see you all the time. It's just a bit mad. But me, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, you know, something special. Yes. I'm a guest. Well, are you a I'm guest a, though if you've been on 50% of the podcasts? I'm... A novelty. <laughs> I'm a treat, you know. I'm still. I'm still. Yeah, you have bread every day, but you only have cake once a week. That's I'm kind advice. of the. I'm like the opposite. I don't eat bread often. Um, <laughs> I don't eat bread often. I'm ah, still a sandwich yet today. to exploit to exploit Tom on TikTok. Um, hey, hey, we did that one with the. Sit down, stand yeah, it, up. It breathing. didn't get uploaded though. Oh. It sucked. Oh. It sucked. Oh. <laughs> the lighting was I bad. See. I see. The how lighting it is. was bad. So, uh, what, he, what he means is we have filmed at least one TikTok. He's just chosen not to use them. That one, yeah. It was it was awful. Because yeah. none of us fell for one, and the whole point of that video is you're supposed to fall over. But we're and just two, too coordinated. The lighting was awful because there was a light directly above her head. But basically, guys, I'm I'm gonna become slash I'm in the process of becoming TikTok famous. Had a couple bangers. It's true. Um, I really enjoyed your accent one. Uh, yeah, I did an accent one. That's got like over twenty thousand views, which is pretty cool. Uh, I did the forehead reveal. The forehead reveal. That's got about fifty thousand views. My most popular one. Mostly like younger kids tagging their mates. Who like, are, ah, like you. tagging their forehead mates. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> look, you got competition. Like, that's literally what it is. And so many like, of my yeah, viewers could, on TikTok are put young. Put a plane on that runway. It's, it's like wow. Yeah, and I made a joke about charging for advertising. My forehead. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could fit all of YouTube's terms and conditions on there. I mean, here's the thing, right? I if I were to because I'm somewhat visible in the public space like anyone would could get quite a sum for tattooing something on their forehead because I'm so visible to the public I reckon I could get at least a hundred grand to get a logo on my forehead but it's a tattoo and it's my forehead but a hundred grand and that's a genuine get, why thing why don't you just get a henna tattoo that, that that wears off after like two months because I'm sure they'd be like it's a henna tattoo yeah but don't tell them That's it's a henna tattoo agree. it's still tattoo yeah and then two months in the in, down the line i see i don't have it and they sue me it's still a tattoo yeah oh yeah i'm sure there'd be a loophole but yeah so my point is i reckon yeah i reckon at least 100 grand for a logo on my head which yeah, but you could just use makeup to cover it up when you go out you could yeah in, unless you like agree what what would be the price we're going back into hypotheticals here what's your forehead price <sighs> depends on what you're putting there that Chelsea logo on the hat, just slap it on your forehead. I, I, I don't think I'd have anything on my forehead for any price. If you had to give a price. <laughs> it has to happen. But you you choose the price. A billion pounds. But like your minimum. That is my minimum. That's your minimum. My minimum. A billion. Is a billion. So you're telling me for 900 million pounds, you wouldn't put a tattoo on your forehead. Okay, so for 900 million, I would. Okay, in which case, my minimum is probably 500 million. So for 499 million, you wouldn't put a tattoo on your forehead. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, the problem is now we're going to eventually get to be like, so really, Tom, you do it. You're going to have to go, you, really, Tom, you do it for a tenner and a half. We'll dog. have to start lower. Would you do it for a million? No. You wouldn't. You actually wouldn't. No. Because it would hurt as well. Okay. It depends. If after like 10 years, I get it lasered off. A million, though. I think I... I don't think I would. I think I would. You know what you could do with that million? I could only buy like two houses. I'm not asking you to buy a house. If I want a house, invest it. Well, yeah. I am not investing it. I just lose it. Buy a house for half a million. Put half a million in uh, an ISA or my ISA an ETF would, or something, and just retire. <laughs> no, I think I think it would have to be two million. To, two million. Two million yeah. as my one point five. No. Two million is a good number. Two million. two million for a tattoo on your head, yeah. as big as that. 
So it's yeah. not even full real estate. Well, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know it's what I mean? I could, I could have a couple others. Like, I could have <laughs> that, and I could be like, it's terrible. Or like, you know, like, yeah, someone could then add to it. I mean, in fairness, like, some people do just tattoo their face and pay to do that. Like, so, yeah, I, th- I think I think two million. Two million. Ah, oh, see, I said 100,000. I don't even support Chelsea, so... 100,000 is tempting, but then again... I mean, in real life situations, I would, I would just wear a hat. I wouldn't for hundred thousand, but no, I, I wouldn't. No, not hundred thousand, but a million. I'd that be very it. tempted. Oh, I'd be so tempted for a million. Like, you could, oh, yeah. But either way, that's my question. If you think of one hypothetical that you would ask me, what would what comes to mind hypothetically? But what's the price of murder? Oh, how much will I so, like, murder let's, someone for? No, so, so someone is in prison. Yep, and they, um effectively would have been given the death sentence yep for what they've done okay how much for me to kill them but um obviously a death sentence isn't a thing but if it was a thing still yeah here, yeah, yeah. Yes. so they kill the queen yeah let's let's say they but you get hanged for that wouldn't you even today yeah, yeah. Mad. Like, regicide is the only crime as far as i'm aware that you can still be punished it's for death unreal sentence. assume assume it's the u.s right okay and you are and they say okay you need to kill this guy but there's not enough evidence to prove beyond absolute doubt that he did it like you're pretty sure he did it but th- in theory all the evidence is circumstantial so okay. all the evidence points towards it yeah but theoretically there is another excuse for every single piece of evidence yeah, yeah, yeah. but he has been convicted yeah he has been tried and convicted yeah he's going to get the yep. death sentence uh-huh. how much would they have to pay you for you to be the one to shoot him you have to shoot him. See, see, if your aim is terrible, you've got to keep shooting him until he dies. <laughs> <When> <laughs> so I you see, like miss and hit his arm. You've got to keep going. So here's the way I see it: like he's going to die anyway, isn't he? Yes. So that makes it a little bit easier. But like if it, you don't, I if think you don't do it. There's a guy behind you that will just do it. Exactly. But realistically, I know morally it would be tough, especially when you put a price on it, because then it feels evil. Also, we don't know for sure he did. I know we don't know for sure, but let's say, he, but he's dying anyway, right? He's there to die. So, like you said, with he that will knowledge, die by the end of someone the day. behind me is going to kill him. Yes. So, if I'm putting a price on just pulling the trigger, ending ah. a person's life forever, permanently. See, yeah, part of me just be like, I don't want to be involved. No money then. But see, that's. But then you could. So you, just... you say that, but if I said his five hundred million. Well, that's that's my point exactly. If someone says there's a billion pounds, I'm going to pull. But then again, am I? Like I am. You should. I think any any person who thinks about the actual implications of that much money should. But, but I wouldn't. I would feel, feel so guilty every time I spent money. I'd be like, I like, I'd be reading a book. Like I only have this book. So I shot guy in the face. I mean, and I'd like buy pay off my parents' mortgage. And be like, but I could only do this. I, I mean, shot I think that. I, I mean, I would do it for a billion, obviously. But I think the way I think the way to make that more interesting is just how much would you just to murder someone if you wouldn't get convicted but they're innocent that's a different question and that's something that i wouldn't do well i wouldn't be able to do that no that, well that's exactly. why i didn't ask you because i knew you'd say you wouldn't do it so I thought I had yeah to go with... what's the thing if they're gonna die in a couple of hours or just straight after i say no just because someone else is gonna do it there would be a right, value what if they're terminal mm-hmm. but so they wouldn't die that day okay they might die tomorrow yeah but they might die in 10 years time you don't know when they're going to die. You, you know. But but is it just that they're terminal or that they're a criminal and they're... Oh, same situation that they're a criminal, but they, instead of the death sentence, they've got a life sentence in prison. So they haven't been sentenced... They've been sentenced to life in prison. And they've been that... given the option, legally... <sighs> yeah, legally, I mean... To do it, and they'll pay you to do it because he's taking up cell space. It's... And they need the space to sell for someone else. It's still a bit weird. I just think it's it's easy if they're if they if they're going to die and essentially I'm just the one who the pulls the trigger sort of thing. There's definitely a value that could be put on that. But at the same time, I don't think it's. I would say it's irrelevant who loads the gun. It's all about who pulls the trigger. Yeah, but I mean, he's gonna die. Yeah, we're all gonna die eventually. Yeah, doesn't mean you can shoot me in the face now. I'm planning to live a good another forty years. I know, but this other guy who's on death row is planning to live another good forty minutes. So not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, if he's gonna die some that day, some people say that some people that stay on death row for literally years. Yeah, but I mean, it's that day. There has to be a value on that. Yeah, but an innocent person, nah, not not. But who are you to determine who's innocent? Yeah, well. So yeah, uh, I threw a pen. And stop the recording <laughs> of the mic. But Whoops. I think we're going to wrap that up there. Wrap the 
the podcast up. Episode 10, we started talking a lot about death and I partly wanted to get away from it, but I partly wanted to talk about it and it just, oh, I don't know. It just went a bit crazy. But yeah, sadly the sore throat's coming back a little bit. So anything you want to add before we Next head off? Next week's will be more cheerful? Can't guarantee that. Can't even guarantee. Next week's hat. If we do next week, we'll be good. We'll be good. Uh, but yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed. Drop a comment down below and we'll see you in the next one very soon. Yes. <laughs>